consideration. We're going to go to Baked Alaska in New York. Wants to talk about tag the transcendental argument for God. Go. Um, yeah. So just to pick up, um, maybe I could provide some continuity with the last caller. Um, I just want to know what the tra I just want the transcendental argument for God. The transcendental so, argument is God is a necessary precondition for mm -hmm. plan. Great. Um, yep. And so. Okay. And so. I, that yep. I don't. I don't know that I accept I, that print. Oh. Hold on. Real quick. Real quick. I'm familiar with the argument. I wanted you just to say that first premise. Right. So, that's the reason why I had you come on was for this premise. You do realize that if you present an atheist with the first premise of this argument, God is the necessary precondition for, precondition for knowledge. Not a single atheist would accept that because they don't believe in God. So it assumes the falsity of their view. So what you're going to have to do now, and this is why I brought you on, was for this specific thing. I want you to take that first premise that God is the necessary precondition for knowledge, put that as the conclusion of a new argument and give me premises that lead to that conclusion because I don't accept the first premise. So that's the only thing that I'd like you to do. Okay. Okay. So I, the only way I could do that on the fly is I would reformulate the argument in the form of modus. Culpa. So you don't have support for the first premise of an argument that you're giving. When I give arguments, I have like three or four supporting arguments for the premises. Like, look at William Lane Craig. Craig, Craig gives the like. Look at Craig. Like, look at Daddy Craig. Right? He gives the he gives uh, everything uh, or everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist, therefore the universe had a cause. But he doesn't just roll that out, right? He gives arguments why there can't be actual infinites, why there can't be um, things that begin to exist, right? Because then things could just pop in from the uh, from the nothing void or whatever. So he so he gives additional arguments like. You know, it's not the case that there are actual infinities or whatever. So, I may, so I may have misunderstood. Mike, I may have misunderstood you. I thought I had. I thought you said not to present the argument with that first premise. I asked you to make a what's called a supplemental argument that takes the first premise that I don't accept, that no atheist would ever accept that God is the precondition. Look, not a single atheist would go, yeah. Yeah, I think God is the precondition for knowledge. Yep, I accept premise one. Every atheist would go, yeah, I, I'm not convinced by that premise, or I straightforwardly think that premise is false. I, I, and so you, what you're going to have to do, what's required of you in the dialectic, is to present a new argument where that premise is now the conclusion of a new argument. So that way we can get from statements that reason our way to that statement so that we can travel back to the first argument, right? This is why I wanted to bring you on because I fucking hate presuppositionalism. I fucking hate it. And I wanted you to come up so I can exploit what no presuppositionalist can do, which is give a supporting argument for the first premise. So I'm going to mute Amen. and you're going to give me the and, and you're going to give me the premises or you're going to concede I don't have that argument, which is my I have a hypothesis that not a single presuppositionalist has that argument. I wasn't so I would have to present a different argument because what you're saying is why. And you don't have that argument? Saying, and you don't have that argument? Well, I mean, essentially, it's all, I mean, the reasoning is all the same, right? I mean, essentially. It's, it's no, nah, it's not. Do you have the argument or do you not? Yes, it's essentially the same argument. Okay, what's the first premise? I mean, I don't. Stop wasting my time. Premise, what's the first premise? That. Uh, the regularity of nature is necessary to form knowledge claims. Wait, but you said God was necessary for knowledge claims. Right. But then I'm going to, so I'm going to, but you won't accept that. So I'm going to start with something that you will accept and then we'll work our way backwards to how that has to be grounded in God. Okay. So what was the first premise again? What else you want me to do? I mean, look, well, I want you to come prepared with, look, it's very clear that you, it's very clear that you're making up premises now. Like you don't like, just be honest with me. Is is the argument that you're the supplemental argument that you're giving me now? Is it written down anywhere? Or just be honest. Are you just literally uh, saying it now off the top of your head? The just be honest. Okay. It's the latter. I'm making. Okay, so you didn't have the so you. Okay, 
So the I'm only not. the only reason dropping the call. The only reason I brought you up here was not for you to actually like go through the dialectic. You can call back next time we have more time. Only reason I wanted you to come up here was because I knew that you didn't have another argument to support the first premise because no presuppositionalist does. And when they do, it's a question begging argument. So, it, so please call in, write it down. Don't just make stuff up on the spot because one, the argument's going to be formally invalid. If you just start stringing together random sentences, thinking that you're using valid inference rules, like the coincidence that you end up using those those uh, inference rules correctly, pretty low, right? Unless you're just using like if-then statements. So call back when you actually have taken the time to writ written an argument and not just like, ah, shit, I got to come up with something right now. 